since I've been really, really interested with Fedora and how they leave the Linux desktop, like especially with them pushing mainland really hard. Um, like you see every distribution, they're like, oh, we'll just stay with X X11. Mm-hmm. Dora's like, no, we're going to full Wayland. If you have issues, well, sucks to be you. Go back to X11 type of thing. Mm. And yeah, like, yeah, I know Fedora has its own issues, and especially like how they're pushing Wayland, and Wayland has a lot of issues. At least they're contributing upstream, like with Wayland fixing a lot of issues and things like that. So, like, they're doing a lot in their part as well. And that's why, like, I was really, really interested in Fedora. They want to lead the Linux desktop. And mm-hmm. They push the newest technologies and things like that. And it's thanks to them, like, a lot of newer technology, like, well, SystemD. Mm-hmm. It's not new anymore, but back then it was really new. ButterFS, um, Pipewire, like, they were one of the few, one of the first ones to push these. And everyone Federal followed up worse. later on. Yeah. Maybe and, in some cases, especially Pipewire, I think they did it a little bit too early. I, I mm-hmm. when when I used Pipewire, I was using Pipewire before they um, initially started shipping it. It was a bit flaky back then. It was still like a very like there was a lot of cases where you'd get a new update and there would be a pretty big regression. Like the way that uh, one thing I bring up every so often is, um, so you know how in your audio mixer you have like your individual uh process volume and then your master volume yeah yeah so in obs if you capture your like audio interface what like your your like the audio source you capture like your system audio um that will always be at the same volume regardless of what level you have it at like regardless of what level you like change the processes to in one version of Pipewire, that swapped around. So it used the process volume and ignored the master volume. So it, I had to like have things really loud for me, and I couldn't actually like hear anything else in my stream properly. That was when I, I oh, yes. in, initially went back to Pulse Audio. Since then, I, I think probably in the past... I want to say not long after OBS started working on Wayland... Pipewire, I think, has been, like, mostly good. I've had a few issues here and there, but besides that, like, if there are distros that are still not shipping Pipewire, I think it's a much harder argument to make they should be doing that. <laughs> yeah, and that's, like, the thing with Fedora is they push things way too, like, way uh, way sooner. Mm. And, and they kind of, ha- like, to be honest, like, you have to do that like when you want to like sure sure um, someone has to do it yeah exactly that's the thing um especially with wayland like i think they started shipping wayland in 2016 or 2017 <laughs> if i remember the like sources yeah um right and obviously that's way too early but of course like someone has to push in and some and at least fedora they're really big and they contribute to uh upstream like a lot and the fact that, like, even though they break a lot of, like, users, like, well, quote-unquote break a lot of user system, mm-hmm. um, at least um, we get uh, we get those technologies a lot sooner than if Fedora wouldn't, uh, wouldn't exist, mm-hmm. like, if you know what I mean. No, I like what you're saying. I think a lot of people sort of forget about the fact... They bring it up when it's convenient, but forget about the fact that Linux overall is this community effort. Sure, there are these corporate interests that are trying to push the desktop forward, but it's not like you just have one entity. Let's say you have, like, you know, let's say Red Hat was the only, the only develop, like, the only, like, company in the Linux space. It's not like they're the only ones who can do something, but someone has to put that stuff forward so that everybody can be like, hey, we can use this, and let's see what's actually wrong with it. Let's contribute back to it and give... Even if we can't uh, code stuff, we can at least give our feedback on it, sort of explain the issues we're having, the different hardware configuration that we have, to bring things, you know, eventually forward. It's going to take a while. It's not going to be like, hey, Wayland is perfectly ready. Everything is 100% next year. But I think it's much better to have someone slowly pushing the pushing the ball forward rather than sort of 
individuals choosing to go and use that software. Like, look at Arkin, for example. People keep bringing up Arkin to me. Nobody knows what that is because no distros ship it. So, like, it's not going to get better because it doesn't have that that interest in it that any like any users actually trying it out. And honestly, I never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think... There's a few people in the Discord who like to be like, Hey, have you tried Arkin? Like, no. No, I haven't tried Arkin. No one's tried I've Arkin. Ne- <laughs> I'll try Mia before I try Arkin. Like you say, it's another, like, display protocol? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, no, I've never heard of that. Yeah, no. I know I Mirror. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, like, even Flatpak, like, technically, they're not ready. Mm-hmm. But to be honest... I don't think anything's ever like, ready in the Linux space, though. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, even distribution packages, they, they were never ready or meant for, applic- of, like, for GUI applications. They have a lot of limitations, and they have a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. People, people just got used to it. Mm-hmm. Just, like, many people, like, who have... Uh, Issues with like X11 uh, screen tearing, mm-hmm. you know, they just add uh, the tear free option, uh, tear free like flag or whatever it is, um, in the configuration, mm-hmm. and they call it a day. Like for them, that's fine, but obviously that's not something an average user like should actually um, suffer from. And that's the thing. Like it's just problems that many people ignore. They're just really used to it, and they don't see it as a problem anymore. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. Um, have you actually messed around with the tear-free option and compared it to, like, you know, Sway or something like that? Because at least for my GPU, tear-free is... it Okay, it works great on the desktop. But anything where I have a fluctuating frame rate, like I'm playing a game, for example, I get horrible stutters. Over on the Wayland side, it's it's smooth. Like it works like you'd expect uh, a you know a VSync solution to actually function. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Like I only use it once, and mm. I remember like uh, the only time is because like I was using Firefox, mm. and it was screen tearing on Firefox. Right. It was. Yeah. So I just enabled tear free, but I wasn't really playing games at that time so i never i probably never encounter any issues or maybe i just got used to it so but... what is um sorry no no it's okay go ahead i was gonna say so what has your experience been on uh on silver blue 